But we can bemoan the economy. We can worry about housing. We can fret over mortgage rates. We can debate when and if the Fed will cut interest rates or not. We can rue the day big institutions discovered the yen carry trade. We can gamble on whether our country's headed for a recession. Or we can overlook that whole shooting match and just pick the stocks of tremendous companies and hold them for the ride of a lifetime. Unfortunately, the former set of woes controls the discourse right now. Sometimes that's good, like today, where we got an encouraging jobless claims number this morning, and then the averages roared, with the Dow gaining 683 points, s and jumping 2.3%, and the Nasdaq surging 2.87%. Usual growth suspects, the magnificent seven, particularly Apple and its suppliers, were suddenly able to free themselves from the shackles of gloom and rocket hire. It was the best day for the S&P 500 since 2022, and big cap tech led the session. But have the sellers truly disappeared? For the moment, maybe. But stock prices have become so dependent on the macro data, the carry trade, the Fed chatter, that it's impossible to give you a pat answer, even as I've told you over and over and over again that corporate America is doing much better than anyone would expect at this point in the cycle. Now, I do know this. Many people correctly now recognize that all stocks live under the tyranny of larger macro forces. Before we decide to buy something, we're supposed to think, hmm, we, we need to, what's going to happen to interest rates today? I mean, if they drop a bit, mortgage rates today, well, you know, if they fell to a 15-month low, isn't that why the market really went up? Well, there'll be more housing turnover. Well, there'll be more rehab and remodel, especially do it yourself. See, we try to divine if a quarter point decline in the Fed funds rate will motivate buy, people to buy new cars, maybe boost GM or Ford, or perhaps we just buy an ETF that gives us a piece of economic oomph, some sort of phony industrial amalgam put together to earn fees for the promoter. We mold the notion that there could be a pickup in semiconductors if the economy accelerates. So we buy an ETF that has semis rather than just going after NVIDIA for AI or Texas Instruments for the Internet of Things. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.